its founding event at the Democratic Convention here, but also because as a very little girl, I used to live in the trailer park at Clearwater Beach Trailer Park. Yeah. <laughs> it's a circle. My father was uh, Gypsy. And so we would leave rural Michigan in a house trailer and work our way, you know, to Florida. Uh, and, and now we have the mayor, the former mayor. Where is she? Okay, believe me, there was not a, a woman mayor in Clearwater Beach at that time. So, in, in so many ways, it feels uh, kind of poetic and, and just, you know, to be here. And I am not here as part of, the, of any campaign. I am not a surrogate uh, for Obama. Um, for one thing, I've learned that to be the surrogate for a candidate means you're restricted to what the candidate can say, <laughs> which is very little. Uh, I was once the surrogate for Hillary Clinton. She had to publicly apologize for me. <laughs> because I was making jokes about McCain. You know, I had a, a, ten, you know, a list of uh, ten top reasons you know, <laughs> for Hillary Clinton, not for McCain. And one was that she had never been trained to kill anybody. <laughs> this was apparently not something you were supposed to So I, I hope that that we can feel free. I mean, it doesn't matter whether we've never voted before, whether we've always voted before, whether we're aligned with one party or the other historically, because the truth of the matter is that women have not, I mean, there is the biggest gender gap in history, as I know. Not because women left the Republican Party, but because the Republican Party left women. And I always feel I have to apologize to my Republican friends because it's mostly old Democrats who started to leave the Democratic Party in, with the Civil Rights Act of 1964, like Jesse Helms, for instance, all the old racist Democrats who had e even been pro-slavery. Uh, and gradually, uh, and including fundamentalist churches, 8,000 foot, you know, they, they had either been apolitical or democratic before. And gradually they have moved over and taken control of the Republican Party. The truth is that Nixon, who supported the Equal Rights Amendment, could not get nominated today. Goldwater, who was pro-choice and supported Planned Parenthood, could not get nominated today. The first Bush, who also supported Planned Parenthood, his wife had been on the board of Planned Parenthood, wow. Wow. that it could not get nominated today. Reagan, who was pro-immigrant and you know could not get nominated. So we have a tragedy, a true tragedy, which is one of our two great parties in the hands of extremists, which makes seem issues that are in fact 60-40 in favor of equality, 50-50 on equality. Uh, and I'm sorry to say that we have a, a candidate uh, in uh, Romney who is, I mean, I'm older than Romney, okay, a lot. I think maybe he could be my son, I have to figure it out. Um, I'm very grateful he's not my son. <laughs> is the most anti-equality presidential candidate this country has ever seen, uh, and who's, the difference between his actions and his words is the greatest I've ever seen. For instance, um, he says he supports women, but he doesn't even, he won't even support equal pay. Right. And it happens that equal pay is not only, I mean, you know, Obama supports equal pay, and says it, you know, it is an issue of equality and a family issue, which it is. But he also doesn't say, and should say, that it's the single biggest uh, economic uh, intervention, you know, to create jobs that you could possibly have, because it would equal pay alone, equal pay for comparable work, would insert two hundred billion dollars a year into the economy. Two hundred billion dollars. Every white woman would get about one hundred thirty-seven dollars more per paycheck. Women of color, close to about three hundred dollars more per paycheck. That's huge. 
And these, we know that this money is going to get spent. These women are not going to send it to a Swiss bank account. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to spend it, and that is going to create jobs. So, you, you know, we, we are working to perfect the candidates we have. Uh, we are, if we have self-respect, I think, for ourselves as female human beings, uh, and respect for men too, because men are then shoved, shoved into a masculine role of control that endangers them, endangers their lives even. I mean, we once rem removed from all the statistics about men's deaths, all those deaths that could be attributed to the masculine role deaths from guns, from violence, from speeding, from tension-related diseases, and it turned out that men lived four years longer. 